everyone. I'm Terry, and this is the Yarn Joy Podcast, episode number 166. Welcome. Well, I just have one finished object to show you and a few works in progress, so let's just get started. Okay, so for my finished object, I finished the Kermit blanket. I'm so excited um, and so happy to be finished with it. Uh, I enjoyed the project, but... Um, I wanted to get finished with it so then I can go on to another project. So this is this was a loom along, um, well still is, you can do it whenever you want to do it, <laughs> but it was a loom along that started with uh, Llama Mama Kayla, okay, and she, but she said that you didn't have to use the, it was a chart and you didn't have to use the chart uh, with loom knitting that you could do you could crochet it or do corner to corner like a graph gan type thing or however you wanted to do it so I decided that I'd do a um, the block stitch okay and it started out as being a mystery crochet along where she were released just one row per week and then um, she had some issues with her health and different things and so she went ahead and she just decided uh, instead of making us wait to um, on the remaining rows one at a time she just went ahead and released the whole chart and I will link in the description box below the video where she linked in her description box uh, where you can get the whole entire chart but anyway it was a mystery for a while while I was making it until uh, we got so far and then I guessed what it was. <laughs> but anyway, let me make sure that I'm showing you the right side. Nope, that was going to be backwards. <laughs> okay, I think I got it now. Here is my Kermit blanket. I think I'm, I'm not sure if you can see all of it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> anyway, I think it turned out super cute. I'm very happy with it. Uh, like I said, I did do the block stitch uh, um, style of graph gan technique, I guess. And in fact, I made a tutorial teaching how to do the block stitch um, in a graph gan. And so I can link that one below as well in the description box. I did the left handed and right handed versions of that. Um, anyway, it didn't, it was not real, it didn't turn out real large. Um, I measured it, I did remember to measure it this time, and it, I came out to 31 inches square, and what I did is I went around the whole entire thing, just one round, doing a block stitch border. I didn't want it to be, um a real fancy type border because I wanted to make sure that it could be for boy or girl and so I just did a plain uh, block stitch type border with five double crochets in the corners and um, so I did that and that enlarged it to 32 inches square so it's not real big but it would be really cute for uh, a baby or a toddler blanket you know a toddler just to cozy uh, cuddle up with uh, maybe or uh, a car seat type blanket or car, car blanket or something but anyway I think he's really cute <laughs> anyway uh, thank you llama mama Kayla for doing this and uh, fixing up this chart uh, I really enjoyed doing it and I am very happy with the results now I will insert a picture here um, of where I took a picture of it all laid out flat so then you can uh, see it a little bit better, okay? So that's my Kermit blanket and uh, I, I could have enlarged it more around the sides. I might go back and do that later, but I, probably not. I think I want to call it done. So um, looking forward to my next project. <laughs> okay, now that is all my finished objects for this week. So let's go on to the works in progress. Okay, so I started the... Um, the character for this month's Rudolph, the, the Rudolph Red Nose Reindeer crochet set kit set <laughs> that I've been doing one per month. Uh, last week, I think it was last week, I showed you that uh, I finally got the yarn I needed to finish Yukon Cornelius's arms. <laughs> and so since um, that 
it, that was July's character and so I was waiting for the yarn and so it kind of ran into August a little bit so I'm just now starting um, the character for August uh, let me show you the box here <laughs> this is the kit that I'm talking about is a kit that came I, I bought off of Amazon but I've seen it at Joann's and Hobby Lobby I think Michaels um, but I got mine on Amazon and I can link it that a link to the Amazon where you could get this in the description box below anyway this kit comes with yarn to make Santa and Rudolph but there's also a pattern book <laughs> that comes in the box and has all the patterns to make those six characters right there all from the cartoon from our childhood days or my childhood days <laughs> and then those six characters right there okay so this is August so I am on character number eight <laughs> and character number eight happens to be Bumble the one that is on the cover of the book okay <laughs> this is the uh, what is the uh, abominable snowman or Yeti I don't know what you want to call him but anyway Yukon calls him Bumble <laughs> now I've only gotten let me see where did he go okay I got his feet done that's it and he is going to be large <laughs> so here is his feet see he's got toes uh, yeah see that yeah so he's going to turn out large I've got this foot done I'm working on the second foot right here still attached <laughs> um, and so like I said he's coming out large now I think last week I said that uh, in the pattern it says to use the white yarn but then it says to brush it I think with like a wire brush to make it fuzzy um, but I don't know if I will do that that just that technique I've done before uh, when I did a squirrel had to do the tail that way and I just didn't like doing it um, so I probably won't do it I don't know I had thought about doing using pipsqueak yarn in fact let me reach it here see I have some the pipsqueak yarn that real fuzzy stuff uh, but as you can see it is a thicker type yarn and I, I did one leg and it was coming out so big you know so much in, I mean this is big in in itself of itself <laughs> but um, when I was using the pipsqueak yarn it was turning out very large and so besides the fact that if you've ever worked with the pipsqueak yarn it is kind of a pain <laughs> to work with um, to, to find the stitches you just kind of have to guess where to put your hook in to and uh, that was just giving me too much of a headache and so I didn't want to do it now pipsqueak is wonderful uh, if you're going to do corner to corner technique I did that with the llama blanket a couple of years ago <laughs> um, and it turned out really awesome so um, I think I will reserve any pip pipsqueak usage to corner to corner the corner to corner technique I think uh, or maybe block stitch or something but but doing like an amigurumi where you have to go into the hole um, the stitches is very difficult now I did use pipsqueak though on the trim on the um, gingerbread the gingerbread boy that I made he has wearing a Santa hat and I did the trim in this and so that wasn't bad because you just did like one round or maybe two but that was not bad but I wouldn't want to do a large project in that so I went back <laughs> to the just the white um, sport weight yarn to do that so that's what I'm gonna use <laughs> and and then I think he'll look fine uh, I know one of my viewers just posted a picture where she had done what well, yeah well on, on the Facebook group she had just done completed him because she's doing it along with me or you know doing this kit is like I'm doing it uh, but she's always ahead of me <laughs> which is fine <laughs> but uh, I enjoy seeing hers and thinking oh that's what's mine mine is gonna look like you know but I had asked her if she brushed the yarn and she said no that that she only brushed his hair right there the little hair on top so I think that's probably what I'll do anyway long explanation little tangent <laughs> but uh, he is coming along so um, 
I'll, I'll try to get more of him done this week. <laughs> Running out of months. <laughs> okay, so that is finish ob no works in progress number one. Works in progress number two is the beach bag, the sunny days beach bag crochet along that I am hosting. Um, now I did. If you were looking for a video on Monday from me for that project, I did not make one because really I didn't have that much to show. Um, because the next two sections on the bag that we're working on, it's just repeats, you know, and, and I did a tutorial showing the first section of the repeats. And so you just do that again, two times, if you're going to do the three repeats. Uh, but I will show you my progress on mine and this upcoming, um, Monday, I should go ahead. I, I think I'm going to be at the point where I'm going to, uh, talk about options for lining the bag if you want to do that. Okay, so this is mine. Let me put this down. So this is how far I've gotten. I think last week I showed you I was right at the top of this per the pink this pink row right there, and so I've uh, did the transition part, which was a bunch of single crochet rounds, and then now I am starting another section of this zigzag piece. Okay, so and. Now, I will put up a picture here of what the pattern looks like um, finished, okay? Okay, so y you saw that in the picture that it has three sections of this chevron zigzag type pattern. And so, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing all three sections just because this pink right there okay that I'm using is this okay it is like I don't remember if it's called hot pink I think I, it's not flamingo no flamingo this is red heart super saver and I know the flamingo is a more of a coral color so it's not that it's like I think hot pink or electric pink it's very bright <laughs> and this is all I have of it left and so when I complete the section see how I put the hot pink on the bottom and then at the top again well I plan on repeating I want to repeat that color scheme there and so I'm gonna I need to go around using this around one more time to finish that see the top of the stripe I don't know if I'm making any sense but the top of the zigzag okay the very last one in the second section is going to be another round of the pink okay but then that if I want it to go continue with that color s scheme I need to have enough for the next repeat which would be two more rounds so this is what I've got to do three rounds of this zigzag pattern and I'm not sure if I'm going to make it or not. You know what I think I can do is, yeah, uh, maybe I'll try to estimate by, um, I will weigh this and then when I do this next round of this, which is the top of that section, then I weigh it again and see how much it took. And then I'll def see if I have enough for two more round rounds in this. Uh, I don't want to have to buy another skein of this just to have you know two more stripes so we'll see if I do a third section or I quit uh, after the second one and then do another of this striping stuff at the top of the bag uh, now I have made this pattern before and I did that I put I, I only did two of these repeats instead of the third one because I mean it's a pretty big it's a pretty good size bag um, and so uh, I will pop in a picture here where I did that before where I only did two of the chevron sections and you can see what it would look like with just two, okay? Okay, so that is the picture that I did of the other project when I did it and I just did the two. And it was a nice, um, oh, well, I don't know if you call it a handbag, but it was a nice bag that somebody could use as a tote bag or actually a purse, you know, shoulder purse bag, whatever. <laughs> and so um, I may do that just also I may do that because I know there's people that are already finishing this bag uh, posting 
awesome pictures of them over on our Facebook group. And so uh, some of them have already lined theirs and because they knew how to do it already and they did a wonderful job and gave me some really cool ideas on how to line uh, different options of lining, lining options. <laughs> and then some of them are waiting for me to see what I'm going to be doing. So um, I may just do the two repeats so that way I can be finished and Monday I can um, show how I'm going to line it. I may do that. We'll see. Anyway, um, so any of you that are participating in the crochet along, if you want to make all three sections to make a nice tall project tote bag that you can do, you know, make blankets or, you know, big projects, put big projects in, feel free. If you want to stop after the second one, um, like I probably will, um, feel free to do that too. You know, it's just make it your own. And I am really enjoying all the pictures that I'm seeing that where people's making them. So anyway, that is the information about the bag kind of catching you up on what I've done, what I'm doing on it. And then on Monday, I will have another dedicated video to the crochet along, uh, kind of talking about lining, probably the lining part of the project, I think. Probably. <laughs> anyway, let's go on. Okay, so works in progress, num that was number two. Works in progress number three is the Perfect Pockets Shawl. This is a commission piece that I am working on for someone. And um, she does watch my videos, so hello. <laughs> I am getting, I'm almost finished with it. So, um, and I hope that you will enjoy it once I get, get it to you. Uh, anyway, I wanted to show I made I have finished the body part of the shawl and it is very nice size Let me kind of slip it on for size so you can kind of see um, It's gonna be a very nice project. I mean, you know Nice to wear it'll be really cozy and comfy. I think See and I'll show you the back um, Back up here. Maybe you can I don't know if you can see all of it. How much how far down it goes it goes probably down to my waist um, something like that so it's going to be very nice and warm and cozy I think and then like I said the pockets will go on either end here okay now I have made one of the pockets um, let's see right let me show that right here make sure I'm showing you the right way yes here is one of the pockets okay and so all I need to do now is make another pocket and then attach it to the shawl and then do there's some fringe that goes on the bottom and so I will be working on that and then it'll be finished and so um, I'm very pleased with the way it's coming out um, I used a very large hook it, it called for a very large hook uh, this is a pattern let me tell you that this is a pattern that is by Sonia Hood yes and I it's a paid for a pattern. I got it off of Etsy. I will put a link in the description box below where I bought it. Totally worth it. It's a great pattern. Um, and it called for like a nine or ten millimeter crochet hook, which is very large. Was that a P or a Q or something? I'm not sure. Um, U.S. letter equivalent size. But anyway, I don't. I didn't. Well, I had one. I think I have a nine millimeter, but. Um, I explained this before. I, I I didn't want to use it because it's very hard, and I like the ones with the the um, the crochet hooks that got, has the rubber comfort grip. Let me reach one. The comfort grip um, handles, and so the largest one I have in these type of hooks is an eight millimeter. But I did do a little piece and measure it to try to see how the gauge was working out, and actually the eight millimeter was more. It was closer to the gauge that was listed in the pattern, so I went with the eight millimeter, and I think it's fine. It's going to be a nice, large, and comfy type um, shawl. <laughs> and so, anyway, um, almost finished with that. Hopefully, I'm thinking that it will be finished by next week, and I can be able to show it to you, uh, or at least I'm hoping so. <laughs> and um, of course there's not a huge rush because it is still super hot here I think it was like 103 or 104 degrees Fahrenheit uh, yesterday <laughs> so there's no, not a big rush in needing that unless you maybe you're in an air-conditioned building that's like super cold or something um, that actually sounds real nice right now <laughs> but anyway um, 
coming along on that and I will pop in a picture here to show you I don't know why I do that because I don't do a picture in a picture so I will insert a picture <laughs> um, of the finished project okay <laughs> Okay, so that is my progress on my works and progresses, <laughs> and that is all I worked on. I have done some sewing. I'm sewing some more bags, uh, but but this is all the stuff that I've crocheted so far. Um, so let's talk about upcoming. Okay, so for upcoming, um, oh, and oh, I was gonna just gonna say about the shawl that this is my entry to the Stash Buster 2020 project a challenge item uh, for the month of August for uh, Crystal of Carn chronically crocheting the Stash Buster 2020 challenge she's hosting through the year with a couple of guest hosts. But anyway, so it was supposed to be a pocket shawl. I mean, that that was what it was. She spun a wheel that she's got and it's got the projects on it and it landed on pocket shawl. And right after that, I got an order for a pocket shawl. So <laughs> uh, this is my entry for that. Okay. So now the happy scrappy yarn challenge which i've also tried to participate each month which has been a monthly thing through this year that is being hosted by christy of t doddles and christy of Cro crochet creations by christy uh anyway they they're like alternating one month one does it and then the next month the other one does it uh, as far as doing the theme what the project is for that month and Christy of Crochet Creations by Christy is the one that's doing it for this month and it is animal related uh, she calls it dog days of summer <laughs> and so um, I have a project I want to do that this, I think it's really cute and so I will probably be showing that next week because it's a quick little project and a good little s scrap project which is happy scrappy yarn challenge so that's good um, and it will also go along with this what I'm going to talk about is the um, the Garfield along that is a charity make along that Amber of Ooh Ah Crochet has been uh, um, running or challenge that she's doing um, and she did make an announcement on her channel that she's extending extending the date to September 15th uh, for you to be able to send items in and then the ones that participate will be uh, their names will be put in as um, for a drawing for a, something just for participation um, anyway she is hosting it she's kind of co-host yeah she's co-hosting it with um, Bonnie of Strawberry Bonnie Crochet, okay, and um, but you don't have to send the items to Amber, which is it's her uh, children's elementary school in the area, okay, and it's like um, small items that, that could be used as incentives or award type things like bookmarks and little loveys and uh, keychains and backpack buddies and stuff like that plus they also said to consider making mittens also because this is in South Dakota which gets super cold in the winter but anyway you don't have to send your items to participate you can donate your items to a charity in your local area just like take pictures of them and post them on Amber's uh, Facebook page or Bonnie's and so I will link the description in the description box below a video where she talks about participating in that, okay? Amber talks about it. Uh, but anyway, she extended it to September 15th, so I'm gonna be making some more little small items that I'm going to be including in the box that I'm sending to Amber. So I'm glad she extended it, <laughs> um, you know, another month. So I think that's great. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Oh, now that I'm finished with the Kermit blanket, and that means now I can start the Pooh blanket that I was showed you last week. I'll put in a picture here. I'm pointing again. I'll be. I will insert a picture right, right here, where um, I will show you what it's going to look like when I'm finished with it. Okay, so that's the poo blanket that's up next in my queue as far as the next project that I'm going to be working on now that I finished Kermit. And it is for a, um, a baby um, 
that's going to be born at the end of October. Um, and the nursery theme is the classic Winnie the Pooh, not the Disney Winnie the Pooh, but the classic uh, out of the book, you know, the illustrations. And so I found that pattern and I thought that it would be perfect for that. So I'm going to be working on that. And I, oh, and I also found an amigurumi of Eeyore that is based on the classic pattern. And so uh, I'm hoping the classic design. And so I'm hoping that I'll be able to get that done too and include that with the blanket. So that's my plan. And I will show, I don't, uh, I will show a picture of that when I start working on that project, but I'm going to do the blanket first. Anyway, so that's upcoming. <laughs> and then also upcoming is preemie hat number three for August. You know, here lately, or the last couple of preemie hats I've made, I've made Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle hats, and um, I'm going to make the next one. And You know, I've got to make the whole set. <laughs> and so I need to make another one for August, which would be preemie hat number three, and then the next one would be first one in September, I guess. Um, anyway, this is a challenge I put on myself each year to make 33 uh, hats per month to donate in October for a Halloween hat drive that one of our hospitals d does in our area for the NICU, the preemies, babies. And so, um, so I'm doing three per month, like I said, to meet my goal. So this will be preemie hat number three when I get this one done for August. Okay, uh, that is it. I do want to say that another, I should, last week I showed you some of my viewers, some pictures that, that my viewers had sent me of projects they have completed. And I did have one more person to send a picture of one of her completed blankets. So I want to... Um, share that with you. Uh, this is from Cindy Butler. Hello, Cindy. Uh, she did the uh, scrappy granny throw crochet along that I I did. Um, oh, is this, I guess, the beginning of the year. But she showed me a picture of it when she finished. Uh, I will show you this one. You used to, you used to could see it in the back of my um, video all the time here, but uh, I, I move chairs and things around, so uh, you can't see it anymore, so I'm going to show you. <laughs> this is the Happy Scrappy, not Happy Scrappy, the Scrappy Granny Throw, I think that's what I called it. Uh, I did a tutorial showing how to make all the different components of it and the assembly. It was a crochet along that I had uh, going, but like, but you can do it anytime if you want to jump in. It's a great sc scrap buster <laughs> and a fun project i really enjoy it I, in fact that's my first one that i made i made a second one when i did the crochet along and it was in green um but i don't have it anymore so uh but anyway i will show you cindy's picture now she did hers in green too and it turned out awesome so um here is cindy's blanket So, she did a great job, don't you think? I think she did a great job. And uh, thank you, Cindy, so much for sharing your picture with us or sh with me so that I could share it with everybody. Um, so, uh, if, if you have pictures of projects that you would like shared on my, uh, to share with us on this YouTube channel, then please send them to me through email, my email uh, address email address is down below in the description box all the time I have it there uh, contact information and um, give me permission to share the pictures and I will definitely share them on my video I think it's fun to see other people's projects okay I think that is it thanks so much to my new subscribers I am this close this close <laughs> from reaching 10,000 subscribers I think I got uh, less than 25 maybe to go to reach 10,000 subscribers. Oh my goodness. I can't. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> so if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I appreciate all the people that have subscribed. Welcome to the new subscribers and thank you so much to those that have been with me from the beginning um, and like I said if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so and follow me along on all the projects that I work on and um, check out the tutorials and things that I have uh, here on my channel and I plan to be adding to those and so um, I'd appreciate it very much <laughs> and there will be a 10,000 subscriber giveaway so um, 
once we get there, then we'll we'll get it done. <laughs> so I think that is it. Everybody have a wonderful weekend, and please stay cool if you if you're in a hot climate like I am. Oh my goodness, it's broiling here still. <laughs> um, so. And if you're in a cold climate, stay warm. <laughs> Everybody have a great weekend, guys. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.